Trahan. I'm Congresswoman Lori Trahan, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you've attended one of my Facebook Live discussions in recent weeks, you've noticed that we're talking a lot about how COVID-19 is impacting normal operations and a lot of different aspects of our lives. That's why we're here today to talk about one of my most important duties, uh, nominating the best and brightest from our district to our nation's most prestigious institutions of higher education, our service academies. I consider this responsibility to be one of the greatest privileges I have as a member of Congress, and I take the nomination process very seriously. Uh, while your grades, class rank, and test scores are a crucial part of your package, I believe it's absolutely vital uh, that we do everything we can to find students who are rich in character and leadership, uh, with unwavering enthusiasm and determination, and driven by a unique commitment to serve our country and fellow Americans. Now, if it weren't for the current health public, uh, the current public health crisis, we'd be doing a couple of events across the district promoting our nomination process and making sure that students applying for the academies know what information they need to submit to us in order to be considered. But like we've had to do with a lot of things in recent months, uh, we're pivoting to this virtual discussion instead. So I'll briefly describe to you what my office's nomination process looks like uh, in the age of COVID, and then I'll turn it over to our outstanding guests who will talk about their respective what their respective academies require and answer some of the questions that you all submitted before our discussion. So to be considered for an academy nomination, you must submit all of the following, a current photo, official high school transcript uh, that must be sent from your school directly, a resume of extracurricular activities, uh, an essay stating why you want to attend a service academy, 500 words or less, and a minimum of three letters of recommendation. The deadline to submit your completed packet is October 31st, uh, so we don't have uh, too, too much time. We've gotten a lot of questions about how we're handling SAT and ACT scores this year. And while we normally require the submission of unofficial exam results when you submit your nomination request, we understand that many of the opportunities to take these exams have been postponed or canceled because of the pandemic. That's why your nomination packet will not be considered incomplete if you do not submit test scores uh, before the October 31st deadline. However, if you do take the SAT or ACT test before the end of the year, we are asking that you submit the unofficial copy of those scores to our office. So if you haven't submitted your completed packet already, you can do so by emailing us at trahanacademies at mail.house.gov or by mailing all of the documents we just discussed to our Lowell office. For more information, uh, you can visit the Service Academy nomination page on our website at trahan.house.gov. And applicants who submit a completed nomination file will be eligible for an interview in November or early December. Uh, nominations will be announced in late December or early January, and we will be conducting virtual interviews via Zoom this year so uh, we can ensure everyone's safety during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So with all of that out of the way, it's my pleasure to now introduce our panelists who are here to talk about their respective academies and what you need to do to apply successfully. Our first guest is Major Jay Kim, the Northeast Regional Commander for West Point's Directorate of Admissions. He was born in Seoul, South Korea before immigrating to the United States when he was nine years old. Major Kim enlisted as a combat medic in the United States Army following 9-11 and eventually received an appointment to West Point where he graduated in 2009. In addition to his Bachelor of Science in Economics, he also holds a Master of Business Administration from Georgetown University. Major Kim, welcome. Thank you, Congresswoman Tran. It's, a, it's my honor to be here and thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to, I just kind of talk about the opportunities at West Point and really all the service academies present. Terrific. Well, we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, our next guest is Lieutenant Lauren Schmiegel, an admissions counselor for the United States Naval Academy. A 2014 graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, Lieutenant Schmiegel went on to complete both 
Nuclear Power School and Naval Nuclear Prototype Training Command. Since then, she has also served as the Assistant Chief Engineer aboard USS Normandy, where she participated in a historic deployment to the Arctic Circle and sustained operations in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. Welcome, Lieutenant Schmiegel. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to connect with candidates from your district and talk more about the Naval Academy. Terrific. And last but certainly not least, our third panelist is Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Carroll, the U.S. Air Force Academy Liaison Officer for our region. Lieutenant Colonel Carroll graduated from Miramac College and received his commission out of ROTC in 2005, serving in active duty for eight years before attending Duke University's law school. He is now a part-time reservist at Westover Air Reserve Base and a full-time attorney at Ropes and Gray in Boston. Lieutenant Colonel Carroll, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you probably heard from my bio. I'm not an um, academy grad, um, but I'm hopefully here to help you so that uh, you, have, you, can, uh, you can make, it, uh, make that leap. So um, there's multiple paths uh, to becoming an officer um, in the military and um, the academy is a terrific one. And um, hopefully I can give you some information and uh, help you get to your goal. Thank you. Terrific. All right, now let's get to some of the questions that folks have submitted in advance of today's event. So this first question could be answered by um, all of you or one of you, uh, but it's not to anyone in particular. I'm wondering if you can take a minute or two to briefly explain how COVID-19 has impacted the admissions process for your respective academies and what folks can expect to experience as they move through the application process. Major Kim, why don't we start with you? Okay, thank you. So we understand here um, at West Point that COVID has a, an outsized impact on everybody, and especially when it comes to things like SATs, ACTs. So we have gone to, and I know the Naval Academy has as well, we've gone to this test flexible um, kind of program where we still are highly encouraging all applicants to take the SAT, ACT, um, we, our application deadline is January 31st, and I know Navy, you pushed it to, I believe, the end of February, February 28th, but um, we would still like to see candidates continue to sign up for tests and attempt to take the test. Now, if all else fails, then we have other things in mind. So like, you could potentially have your candidate bio evaluated with, the, uh, with your PSATs, uh, or if you absolutely cannot take any test whatsoever, there are also other options where we can kind of figure out different ways to evaluate your file, but the testing is a big issue. And also the candidate fitness assessment, we understand with the social distancing and needing to have someone administer that in a close proximity. And that's why we are, our volunteers are, a lot of them are willing to help with that, but um, just making sure that you are starting with enough time, especially when it comes to the Dodmerb qualification. So Dodmerb is the Department of Defense Medical Examination Review Board. They do medical qualification for all the service academies in ROTC. Because COVID is so, it has kind of thrown the system for a loop, we recommend starting that process as early as possible. And if you do it for the Naval Academy, it also transfers to us. So um, getting started early and trying to be aggressive with the process is what I would recommend. Great. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to chime in on the Naval Academy. I know Major Kim had mentioned some different parts regarding the Naval Academy. We really very much align with West Point. Um, our application deadline has been extended to February 28th. For mm -hmm. our test flexible, the way that we define it at the Naval Academy, um, so you hear that term test optional out there. There are several universities and colleges that are test optional this year. What that means is a student can say, I'm not submitting standardized test scores and, and that's it. Um, test flexible for the Naval Academy, what that means is if you don't have an opportunity to take that test or maybe you've only taken it once and you, you haven't performed up to the standard that you want to, um, but you're not able to retake it, we understand we're not gonna penalize you for that, but as part of our test flexible policy, we ask that you provide written documentation as to what your situation is, why you couldn't take those tests, and how you've been affected. Um, aside from that though, I do realize that there are so many different situations 
out there right now. Different states are handling things differently. Schools within the same district are handling things differently. There are things out there that I may not have even heard of yet as an admissions counselor. For example, a school just contacted me last week and they canceled all of their AP courses. So the main goal that we are looking for to come out of this environment, it's definitely a learning experience for all of us, but as a candidate, please be fully transparent through this nomination process, through the application process. Please be fully transparent with us so that we know what your situation is, what hurdles you're facing, and we can address those as a team. Makes sense. Okay, Lieutenant Colonel. Yep, uh, and I understand that people are in you know various um, years in the admission cycle, and you know maybe you're tuning in, you're you know a freshman or a sophomore, maybe you're a junior, maybe you're a senior. Um, the Air Force Academy has actually pushed their deadline for um, standardized tests to the ACT um, standardized test date, which I believe is um, February sixth, uh, two thousand twenty-one. So um, you can well accept tests as late as six February. Um, you know we'd like to get tests before December, uh, but just be in communication with um, admissions liaison officer like myself or admissions counselor and just kind of explain the circumstances. You know, uh, under no circumstance should you be taking a test if you're at risk of getting COVID or um, you'd expose others. So, you know, these are things that we're taking as a case by case uh, sort of basis. But, um, you know, the bottom line here is we're willing to adapt. We're really trying to work with the candidates, um, you know, things like the kid candidate fitness assessment, standardized tests, um, physicals, um, you know, these are things that, you know, in unprecedented times, we understand that. And so we don't want to preclude anyone from applying to the academy because of, you know, certain circumstances that come up at school or um, within the family. So just, just realize that, you know, what's coming from the top at the Air Force Academy is everyone's being very flexible and accommodating. And, you know, uh, we, will, we will find a way um, to, to make sure that you get evaluated kind of in a holistic way, um, even if, you know, you are missing something. Great, great. That was all very uh, important and valuable information. So thank you. Uh, uh, Major Kim, this next question is for you. Last year, pre-COVID, I was able to host uh, a number of students and their parents in my office when they dropped off their nomination packet. So my team and I could answer questions in person. Uh, an interesting thing I've noticed is that folks aren't always fully aware of the wide array of educational opportunities after graduating from a service academy. Can you talk about the different opportunities available um, to go to graduate school either directly after graduating from West Point or while in the Army? Sure, I'd love to. Uh, th that's a great question because there are so many opportunities to attend graduate school within the military structure. So uh, outside of, from directly from West Point, we have something known as the West Point Scholarships Program where we prepare our cadets who are looking to do things like attend, um, apply for the Rhodes Scholarship, the Marshall Scholarship, or the, the Fulbright Scholarship. We prepare them and mentor them to ultimately uh, go out and compete for these scholarships. And, and we do pretty well. We typically, um, with Rhodes Scholarship, we are the fourth rank uh, school in the nation. So that's after like Harvard, Princeton schools that have larger undergraduate uh, bodies than us. But every single year, we send about 100 of our students directly to uh, these these different types of scholarship programs. So I mentioned Rhodes, but we also have these technical scholarships where you earn a master's at MIT. So the Lincoln Laboratories, yeah. the Draper scholarships. Um, we also send a lot of cadets to medical schools. So because we are the largest of the armed forces, we send a good chunk of our class, about 2%, um, to different medical schools. So this past graduating year, we sent students to uh, Yale, Stanford, Brown, UCLA Medical School directly after graduation. Um, but the option is also available for, uh, for you after spending a couple of years on active duty to attend graduate school. Like before I took this job for West Point admissions, the Army, I was selected to attend uh, graduate school fully funded by the U.S. Army. And that's a pretty common thing. So you have the opportunity to kind of go grow out your hair, live the, the graduate school life and while still getting paid a salary. And that's a really great opportunity, I think, that exists that people don't know of. The, the military and the Army is continually looking to help you improve and grow. And education is a key part of that. So if you are looking to serve, I mean, that's a big benefit, I believe. Terrific. Terrific. Um, 
That's uh, so helpful. Uh, the next question I have uh, is for, well, not I have, that was submitted uh, to us is for uh, Lieutenant Schmiegel. Uh, extracurricular activities are certainly uh, important components of an application that we look at when considering who to nominate for a coveted spot at our military academies. But this year I'm finding that I'm having to take into consideration how COVID-19 is impacting many of those options for students to participate um, in activities outside of the classroom. Can you just talk a little bit about how the Naval Academy Admissions Board is taking into consideration how COVID has impacted a student's ability to participate in those activities? Absolutely, and I know it's a big concern for a lot of these students because they were anticipating being captain of a spring sport or being captain of a fall sport and that fell through. Or even those summer programs that you were going to take advantage of as a student. Maybe you uh, were accepted into boy state or girl state. Those are really big accomplishments um, and they should definitely be recognized. And so at the Naval Academy on our application, we actually have a spot for applicants to annotate everything that has been affected by COVID. And we encourage, again, I'm gonna encourage that transparency. We tell candidates, write everything. So even if you don't think it's an important thing to us, I guarantee you it probably is, especially in this environment, so many situations out there. Um, it's important that you, even if you think you would have been captain during the fall, sports season, throw that on there. Uh, it's important for us to not only see what was canceled and what was missed out on because of COVID, but be able to see what your goals were that maybe you couldn't necessarily accomplish. So um, we are using that space on the application. And then obviously in the actual admissions board itself, um, we are very thorough as it is, but now with all that transparency and all the additional information that students provide to us because of this COVID environment, we are truly going to be scrubbing every single application line by line. So the more that you can give us, the better. That's great. And it's great that you've allotted space uh, for that. I wasn't actually thinking that, you know, by being transparent, you're also exposing, you know, what your goals were, uh, which is an important input uh, into these applications. Um, okay, Lieutenant Colonel Carroll, uh, last year my team attended a candidate fitness assessment in Chelmsford and met with students and parents to discuss the nomination process. With many schools going entirely remote or currently in a hybrid environment, students may not be able to arrange for a qualified person like a, a PE teacher to conduct their candidate fitness ass assessment. Are there more opportunities for students uh, applying to the Air Force Academy this year to take their CFA? Yeah, so that's a really great question. And um, the Air Force Academy has actually just uh, adopted a new policy. So admissions liaison officers like myself and admissions counselors and advisors um, are now allowed on a case by case basis to administer the CFA. Um, however, um, candidates should have exhausted all other kind of avenues and, and methods before um, you know, approaching an ALO or admissions advisor. Um, you know, we still say the candidate should try to get a PE certified teacher. Um, obviously, if they're you know not in school, that that's more difficult. Or a non-family member who's in the military, um, or even you know if they're applying to another academy, um, another academy service rep um, who are also um, you know voluntarily uh, doing that. There's still some um, you know protocols that need to be in place. You have to make sure that because we just don't want to make, put anyone at risk. So, you know, the administrator, um, whoever is giving the test and the student, they both um, have to certify that they haven't been within kind of high COVID exposure situations in the last couple of weeks. Um, and then the uh, candidate also has to bring an assistant with them. So that's someone kind of in their um, COVID group um, who will be holding the feet during the sit-ups, you know, um, helping them with a the pull-up bar, uh, we do a basketball toss, um, and so they have to, they're the ones touching the basketball, the assistant and the candidate, um, the, the test, the tester um, administrator doesn't, doesn't do any of that stuff. So, um, yeah, so this, we've expanded, this is a big thing. We get a lot of those kind of questions, um, you know, your, your local ALO or um, uh, advisor is allowed to um, administer those. So just kind of reach out and see if there's one in your area that, that can help out. Great. 
Great. Um, well, I want to thank you all uh, for answering those questions that were submitted. You know, before we conclude our discussion, uh, it always happens that, you know, uh, there's maybe something that someone hasn't thought of. Uh, so if you have anything else that students and parents need to know as they navigate the application process for your academy this year, or if we haven't covered something already that you think is important uh, to flag for folks tuning in, uh, please, let's use this time to uh, give those parting thoughts. Yeah, so, um, you know, I tell all the candidates to go to academyadmissions.com, that's the Air Force Academy's website, and they've done a really good job of staying up to date with all the COVID kind of new policies and the frequently asked questions, the questions that have been asked here and um, probably outside are all there as well. So um, that's just a really great resource. If you have a question, it's probably already been asked by another person um, on that site. So um, I would go there as kind of your first initial matter. Um, and then if you can't find questions, obviously reach out to someone like myself or, or a counselor but um, that's that's kind of the place I just steer everyone um, to because it and it changes kind of I check it weekly and it changes almost like day to day um, in terms of what uh, the Academy is accepting now Major Kim nope. uh, it's been it's been mentioned but you know just staying in touch with all of us we understand that you know this is not a normal year and we're 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 all working through this together but we can't help you uh, resolve issues or we can't uh, unless you kind of stay in contact with us. So that's just something having open lines of communication, not only directly with the admissions office, but our field force volunteers. I know Navy call blue and gold officers, uh, Air Force calls them ALOs, but just having those lines of communication and let us know whatever is going on. Because ultimately, we are all here to help all the candidates get through this process as best we can. And like that's our job. Like we want to help and we want to see young men and women serve this country. So um, yeah, we're here to help. And so please stay in touch with us. Thank you. And I just ask that um, as a candidate, as students, you don't let the COVID environment dictate whether or not you apply to a service academy. I've talked to several candidates already that um, are considering withdrawing applications from service academies just because they're scared that because of their situation, you know, lack of AP courses, lack of extracurricular activities, that their application isn't gonna be as strong. Please do not let this environment dictate that thinking. Um, put everything you have into the application and leave the rest up to the admissions board. Um, again, like everyone has said, communicate with us, be transparent with us, and the rest will take care of itself. I couldn't think of a better uh, piece of advice to leave folks with. Um, I wanna say thank you. Uh, to our outstanding panelists for taking time out of their busy schedules uh, to join us today and answer these really important questions. While COVID-19 has certainly changed a lot in our lives over the past seven months, it hasn't altered our commitment to making sure that the best and brightest in our communities have a shot at attending uh, the most prestigious institutions in our country. You know, those who attend U.S. service academies will receive a world-class education rooted in uh, learning leadership, discipline, and communication skills necessary to become an officer in our country's military. So as we've heard today, the education attained and the skills learned over the course of enrollment are invaluable in a limitless number of career pursuits, both for those who are looking for a career in the military and for those who enter the job market after fulfilling their service obligations. So, before we say goodbye, I'll just reiterate once again for those interested in applying that the deadline to submit your complete application packet to our office is October 31st. Uh, and if you have any further questions about the nomination process, be sure to visit the uh, nominations page on our website at trahan.house.gov. And I've also included a direct link in the comments section for those looking to find out more information here. So thanks again to our incredible panelists. Your answers were so helpful. And I wanna thank all of you for tuning in this afternoon. Stay safe uh, and stay healthy. Take care. Thanks.